Hello and welcome to another light reading sponsored video. This one features Wind River as we discuss their success in the most recent Leading Lights Awards program. My name is Phil Harvey. I'm an editor here at Light Reading. And today I am joined by Paul Miller at Wind River. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hi, how are you? Very nice to meet you. Good to talk to you as well. Um, and and first of all, uh, right off the top, let's let's say congratulations. Uh, Wind River uh, won for uh, 5G Technology Vendor of the Year, and uh, and the the product in question was the uh, Wind River Studio. I, I I suppose that news went over well back at uh, Wind River HQ. Yeah, it absolutely did, and we feel really excited and frankly honored to receive that award. The company's been in, you know, investing for many, many years in this space and uh, finally get some really strong commercial success and deployments and, and recognition around the innovation that we have in the product was very, very exciting for the team. So, yes, thank you. Yeah, it it, it uh, well, you're welcome and you earned it. I mean, uh, the 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 one thing that stood out in the judges remarks is, you know, they they kind of keep going back to um what what proves that a vendor is standing out in the industry? What proved, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, where where are the proof points that that suggest that they're um, uh, that they're doing something that that's not easily, not, you know, not easy to do, and also that's uh, incredibly beneficial for the rollout of five G, especially in this past uh, you know calendar year. Um, so I did want to kind of cover with you, uh, you know, and, and kind of talk over some of these uh technology points that uh that you know what 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 is it that you think about uh wind river studio that, that you know uh stands out in terms of uh uh in terms of the market and and enabling carriers to uh deploy 5g not just faster but more profitably yeah thanks phil so we really took an innovative path around what we were trying to bring to market obviously the 5g space is incredibly exciting there's a lot of innovation going on there and in particular, about four or five years ago, uh, we co-founded an open source initiative uh, called Starling X in the Open Infrastructure Foundation. And that was an open source attempt to create a brand new cloud infrastructure that could be used for virtualized RAN deployment in 5G. And we found that that was necessary because looking at existing uh, Kubernetes and OpenStack technology, these technologies were really designed for what we call a monolithic data center, right? Where all the compute units are co-resident with each other in some facility somewhere. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the topology of a 5G RAN, as you try to virtualize to the edge of the network, you've got thousands to tens of thousands and more of sites that are running as clouds. And to operationalize that for a service provider is very challenging. So recognizing those new requirements, we built a new technology that fundamentally is a distributed cloud that allows you to operate that 5G network from a single pane of glass and has a variety of technology attributes that make it very attractive for the service provider to run and, and deploy their network. And they can do so at an incredibly low TCO, which as you can imagine, with a network that's got tens of thousands of sites, anything you can do to save them either CapEx or OpEx is going to be a, a strong support of your product. So that real innovation over the past you know, four or five years has resulted in a, a commercial deployment at Verizon, which is the North American deployment of 5G for a tier one carrier. Uh, and then as we move forward, we contributed into Open RAN and um, won that technology uh, with Vodafone in the UK and can continue to build business globally around VRAN and ORAN technology. So very, very exciting journey and, and some innovative technology that we produced. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you referenced the uh, deployment example there at, at Verizon for uh, for its 5G VRAN, because that, that's, you know, not just a, an incredible uh a testament to the, the the power of the technology, but also you know as all of the uh, uh, major carriers, you know their their life to some extent hasn't changed with five G, and that people are still using as much bandwidth as they can possibly deliver on any device they could deliver it on, and they're not willing to pay that much more than they were last year, <laughs> and so it does continue to, uh, you know, create a challenge. So the operations part needs to be uh, not just uh, simplified dramatically, but uh, completely automated. And uh, and then of course you've got the challenge of five G, where you're hooking up more devices, uh, you know, to to you know with uh, with uh, modems and and you know to the internet, um, and uh, in more places. So so it's it's a, a twofold challenge um, in in the Verizon uh, deployment specifically, uh, what what technical problem did you did you solve for Verizon? Yeah, there's a few things in it. We solve for Verizon, but everyone else as well, which is really 
a technology that requires the minimum possible footprint down to a single compute node at the far edge of the network, still running it as a distributed cloud. That means that you need a minimum number of servers to deploy the technology. And then within that server itself, usually you have you know, an Intel CPU that has some number of cores in that CPU. We take the minimum footprint in the market today, which is two, um, two cores on that server for our overhead for our software. The remainder of the cores are then available for the 5G network function, which means you get a higher density of cell towers uh, per computer. This drives down overall TCO, right? And then on top of that, when you look at the entire network, because the TCO should really be measured against the entire network, we have a lot of operational tools such as analytics and machine learning that allow you to visualize and see what's happening across the entire network, even including the RAN workloads that are running in it. We have automation and orchestration tools that are used to deploy lifecycle manage the software. So over the years, we've kind of built up a software suite, we call that Wind River Studio, that gives the customer the ability to, to deploy and operate with extremely low cost and, and to deploy a network that has the lowest possible TCO for this type of technology. The result of that was a system that has lower cost than the existing legacy approach, which has been a very difficult thing for the market to produce for a virtualized solution, especially it being new technology, but we've been able to do that at Verizon and others. What What's the um, uh, Wind River Studios uh, main value add to open RAN networks? Because you talked about uh, hmm. Uh, contributing to uh, to the ORAN spec, um, obviously there's there's some uh, ORAN compliant uh, deployments, five G deployments that are uh, that are out in uh, I think mostly in other countries right now. But uh, but it's 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 certainly a technology we're watching closely and it's catching on. Um, how does Wind River factor into Open RAN? Yeah, Open RAN was a really initi uh, interesting initiative. It started with the ORAN Alliance. This was really about you know if you look at virtualizing the network, you have the disaggregation of the technology hardware, a virtualization layer, and then application software. This is different than what was done previously with a you know a monolithic proprietary hardware appliance. But ORAN then disaggregated east to west. So the network functions from the cellular core all the way down to the edge have standardized interfaces. And that again is a powerful commercial advantage for the service provider. When we saw that happening and the ORAN SC or software community started up for a virtualized version of that technology, we decided to contribute our open source software, Starling X, as the foundation in ORAN of what's called O-Cloud. So all of the O-Cloud infrastructure models that are used to support 5G technology in that open source and open community initiative is founded on our technology from this company. Excellent. Um, last question, because we're uh, running out of time, I need to wrap up, but what is, the, uh, uh, what is the future of the Wind River Studio platform? Where do things go from here? Or, mm. or if you want to frame that differently, what are you looking forward to uh, in, in uh, 2023? Well, a couple of things. We've added a lot of capabilities to Studio now, uh, which we talk to addressing the four quadrants of software lifecycle, develop, deploy, operate, and service. So in the develop capability set, we have now a full cloud uh, cloud native DevOps uh, pipeline that allows you to build the applications that are then deployed on the network. And if we look in the 5G space specifically, I'm really excited about the future of what's going to happen to these carrier networks once they have this virtualized infrastructure in place. For example, uh, automotive applications like vehicle to vehicle accident avoidance and autonomous vehicle driving uh, in the private 5G space lights out manufacturing and augmented reality. Once you bring a Kubernetes and virtualization solution to the edge of the 5G network, you can start building all kinds of new revenue streams as a service provider because you can deploy any software anywhere you want in your network. Yeah, that's a, that's a particularly attractive uh, 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 market, connected cars, and a, a really you know kind of open-ended, interesting application because, <laughs> like you yeah. said, in, anywhere, anytime sort of uh, uh, gets the wheels turning about what service providers could possibly do next. Um, okay, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, Paul Miller with Wind River. Uh, first of all, again, congratulations on uh, the Leading Lights uh, win for 5G uh, Technology Vendor of the Year. And uh, thanks so much for uh, for sponsoring this uh, this video. Thanks a lot, Phil. We feel really honored.